Congress annually polls at historically low levels for performance. Uh, my question for you, and then we'll go to Corey, is how, how would you change the culture in Congress? Well, that's exactly one of my platform points. I want to create more civic engagement in a, through the Internet. I mean, we have a few civic engagement platforms for politics right now. One of them I've been working with, I hear my voice, it's, um, it's out right now. Um, they're wanting to coordinate with me. If I can get elected, I can implement that into the mainstream public where they see the issues that we have on the floor, both sides of the issue, and they can actually create interactive input into that. And we can see that. We can see the metrics that say, hey, this is where the constituency is leaning on this issue, that issue, on, on this decision that Congress needs to make. So if they feel more involved in politics, I think they will have a better you know, viewpoint of Congress. Because right now, Congress is so divisive between the Republicans and the Democrats, it's, it's ridiculous. It's like a wall that's been built in Congress between the two. And they're not talking. I mean, I, I commend Bill Posey for trying to, to work with a Democrat um, near our district here and, and get that going. But on the whole, Congress is broken. And, and we see that. The public sees that. So the only way to fix it is to have an independent come in, no party affiliation, come in and bridge the gap. We need to say, where is our common ground between these two differing viewpoints, and let's bridge it. We're all working for the same thing, the betterment of America. Let's do that. Let's do that in the best way possible. Let's create jobs. I like what Bill Posey was saying on working with the staff. That is important. We, we've got to have... I will. And that's another thing that the government does not have that private industry has. Government does not use lessons learned databases. They don't use succession planning to bring new people in. Private industry does that. They have to make a profit. They know the advantage of doing that. We need to bring some of that into government. And so I want to use a lot of the things Bill Posey has been doing and carry it to the next generation. We need to carry it to the information age. We have um, a lot of millennials that are looking at, at ways so they can be involved, ways to improve our government, and I think we can improve it. And once we improve it with civic engagement, we can create a better viewpoint for Congress, and, and people will start to like Congress, and, and the taxpayers' money will start to be better used when you have transparency and accountability and see the benefits of what the tax money is being used for. People won't be so against taxes if they see the tax money is being used for their betterment. <laughs> right now, they see a lot of waste, and they don't want to pay taxes. So okay. I need to change that whole culture. Okay, thank you. Corey, how would you change the culture? Um, okay. I was a logist for over a decade, and I worked to protect our air, water, wildlife, public lands. I worked on farm bills, tax bills. I worked on energy bills. Um, and before 2010, you could always get 30 Republicans uh, in the House and Senate to work um, for environmental protection including on climate change legislation. And, you know, we would do stakeholders, and you would have people come in from communities, and you would get scientist letters, and you would do all the activism, and, um, and then we would move legis legislation and policies, and it was great. But after 2010, money took over everything in the House and the Senate. Um, part of it was Citizens United, and it was these super PACs and these um, dark PACs where you can't even see where the money comes from. And I really think the American public lost complete and total trust with Congress. So they started to realize that their House members and senators were voting on behalf of things like Big Sugar, or oil and gas, or Wells Fargo, or um, the NRA, instead of talking to them and communicating and coming up with uh, compromise. And it became much more difficult for, for definitely in the House and in the Senate for people to work together. And um, I do agree that it's the worst I think it's ever been that I've seen as far as um, the, the rudeness and disrespect and the, just the, the, the inability to work together on behalf of the American public, on behalf of voters. So some of my ideas are <laughs> to overturn Citizens United. We have got to get money out of politics. I haven't taken any money from PACs. I, nobody owes me. No one owns me. I would be a free agent to just vote for the, the people of the 8th District. Um, there's these things called five minute four speeches that members of Congress give before votes and just to express their opinions on amendments and things. And I think at the end of each of those, uh, members of Congress should be required to say who donated to them regarding that issue. So if you're talking about oil and gas drilling off of Brevard's beaches or um, seismic area testing, you have to say, I took $74,000 from the oil and gas industry. 
And that way kind of goes along with what Bill was saying, where you just be more transparency and more open, because we have got to reestablish trust between Congress and the American public um, that they're actually serving the voters and people and not special interests. And I think that would do uh, go far in increasing Congress's popularity. Okay, thank you. Congressman, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to tweak the question slightly uh, for you. You've, you've served four terms now um, in the House. Um, are, are you part of the problem or part of the solution? <laughs> it depends who you talk to. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely part of the solution. And, and uh, you know, one of, one of my first goals when I got there, and it, and it took six years to do that, was to have a 72-hour period of public availability to read any legislation before it came to the floor. And uh, it ended up being three days, so technically now they can do it in 48 hours and in one second. But, but that was a big fight. The speaker spoke against me in conference and in rules to do that, but I finally got that pushed through. Major, major, major. Uh, now there's no excuse for not having an opportunity to look at legislation that you vote on. The next thing is revise the way legislation is done. And, and this is a little bit in the bushes, but it is so critical. You know, I, I, I think both sides, Republicans and Democrats, leadership, likes to keep members in the dark. I think they make Congress intentionally dysfunctional. Uh, and give members 50 different things to do to worry about. Uh, number one, they want to spend a lot of time raising money, which I do not do. And, and uh, just so you don't have your eye on the ball. And just so you're easier to manage. Uh, in almost every state, le state legislature in the United States, every bill that you get is presented in comparative print. What that means uh, is that they take the statute that you're dealing with and they hash mark through, you've seen them, I know you've seen them before, they hash mark through, and you look at state legislation, what words they're deleting, and they underline any words that they add. And you say, well, what difference does that make? Well, you could have a 30-page um, a bill, you could have a 200-page bill, <coughs> and all it would do is just change shell to must, change 18 to 21, but you read that, and if you don't know what's existing language and what's new, you're not going to pick up the substance of that legislation. You're just not going to do it. And that's the way Congress has always put their legislation forth. Since my first year there, at, at every uh, conference, Republican conference, and every rules conference, I have tried to change that. I've been defeated in voice vote because the speaker has spoke against my request to do that. Um, I was one of 25 people who voted against John Maynard being retained as speaker. Everybody said that was gonna be absolute political suicide. I don't care, I thought it was the right thing to do. He was not doing a good job as speaker. Um, I voted against leadership many, many times. Um, you know, the, the first thing was uh, on patent reform, and I can tell you why I did that. You know, you, you take the, way, the idea away from the first guy that had it and give it to the first person that filed it. That's really great for the foreigners and the big companies, but it screws the little investor. Uh, to the most recent one was, was product labeling, when Congress wanted to prohibit states from being able to label products. They called it the Monsanto Bill. Uh, but there's probably been 20 major issues that I've opposed uh, my own party on, and uh, you know, I can assure you that absolutely positively nobody uh, controls my vote, period, in the subject. But those are some of the ways I think it will help. You know, Congress is, is polled terrible for years and years and years, and you read my little book about accountability, I talked about it in there. Um, I think the, the, about the, um, the highest approval rating Congress has had probably in the past four decades has probably been 20%. And uh, although most districts love their congressmen. That's because um, my district thinks different than Nancy Pelosi's district. You know, Nancy Pelosi could not get elected in my district. Do we all agree on that? And I could not get elected in Nancy Pelosi's district. Do we all agree on that? Okay. So you take, like, there's, <coughs> there's this one ranking uh, that, that Corey likes to show around that I got an environmental rating of in the teens. Well, Nancy Pelosi got 100. So, does that mean I should vote like Nancy Pelosi uh, to represent my district? No, it doesn't. Now, Freedom Works has a rank. I get 100 on Freedom Works. What Nancy Pelosi gets, she got a zero. So, you know, you have these, these, these different nice. sides balancing that. So, that's not really transparent. We do a lot of, we do a lot of outreach. I meet uh, with every constituent that requests to meet with me personally. I, I, I meet down here or I meet up there. 
Um, we have tele-town hall meetings for people who don't even want to talk to us, but we give them an opportunity to listen. Uh, it's a new technology for, you know, a few hundred bucks. I can dial up, you know, 10,000 people for an hour, hour and a half. It's wonderful, the, the exchange that we have. People say, man, I never knew that. Oh, that's the other side of the story. Oh, that's how it really works. So those are some of the things. That, so much is education, Rich. You know, let, let, me, let me stop you there. Okay. 